Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is our final lesson. I know, final lesson on slope that we'll be doing for this school year. Uh, so I wanted to end, uh, end our time talking about a formula that you're going to be using over and over and over and over again next year when you move into Algebra 1. Um, and it's it's kind of a culmination of everything that we've done. We've worked on equations, we've worked on word problems, we've worked on the use of slope. Well, today we're going to be looking at the slope-intercept formula. Uh, but before we get into that, a little, little background. So, the slope-intercept formula. So if we look at our, let me move my face right here. If we look at our graph here, we have our x-intercept, our x-axis, which is represented by the green line our y-axis, which is represented by the red line, and then the line that is intersecting both, that is our graph. That is the linear graph for this equation. And you can see that uh, the x-intercept and the y-intercept are both being pointed out. Well, the formula for slope-intercept is y equals mx plus b. We know that our y stands for our y-coordinate, x stands for our x-coordinate, m is uh, the slope variable. Slope is always represented with that variable m. The only one that is unique is this variable b. That's one that we have not seen yet. Uh, so in our slope formula, b is the variable that represents the y-intercept. Uh, but what is the y-intercept? Well, that is where our graph crosses the y-intercept, y-axis. Think the y-intercept coordinate will always be zero. So the graph for this is zero comma, and then whatever this number is. Think intercept means intersection or crosses. So the formula that we have is y equals slope times the x-coordinate plus b, which is whatever our y-intercept is. So for the graph that we're looking at right now, our y-intercept would probably be somewhere or something like 6, because it looks like if we count up 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, um, so it's our slope times the x-coordinate plus whatever our y-intercept is. And this graph or this formula should look familiar because a lot of the word problems that we've done, I think specifically back to the one involving uh, sunflower growth from a couple of weeks back, where our sunflowers started at 12 centimeters tall, but then every day it grew 0.6 centimeters. Without knowing it, you wrote an equation that was in slope-intercept formula because it started at 12 centimeters and then every day it's going to get a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, but it's always, it's starting at 12 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.06. So our formula, the slope-intercept formula, y equals slope times x plus the y-intercept or y equals mx plus b. So let's look at it. So the steps that we need to take in order to graph something in slope-intercept form is from the graph that we're, or from the formula we're given, we first graph the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is you look for, let's see, I'm gonna start my, so if this is my, my y-axis here, I always start by graphing I look wherever it intersects on the y-intercept. So for the y-intercept, the coordinate will always be, my x-coordinate will always be zero because that shows me that it's somewhere here on the y-axis. And then if it's negative four, I count down and put my point at negative zero, negative four. If my y-intercept is five, I count up to positive five, but it's always somewhere on that y-axis if it's in slope-intercept form. And then we use the slope, or m, to create more points. And this is why we've been practicing with the slope formula, why we, we started when we talked about slope, we started to talk about rise over run. We count, if it's one half, we count up one unit, 
and then over two units. If it is two over one, we count up two units and over one. That's why I've been asking you to write slope as a fraction, as to write it as rise over run, because that's going to help you now that we're using the slope intercept formula. And that, like I said, the slope is the rise over run, and then we just use a ruler uh, if we're doing this on pencil and paper, to draw a line that connects those two points. Because every point along that line is going to be a solution for the y-intercept formula. But it's very hard for us to graph like all of, or like to calculate all of the infinitesimally small points in between. That's why we look for intersections. But I'm getting ahead of myself. And then we show that since this is a line that runs forever in both directions, you put an arrow at each end. Now, what's this going to look like? I clear my. So, if I'm given the equation y equals y equals two thirds x plus one, this is the equation that I'm going to graph. So, I'm starting with my graph here. I first find my y-intercept, which is 1. And so the coordinates for that are 0, 1. And then I look at the coefficient that is with the variable x. Remember, the coefficient is the number that you're multiplying by the variable. So that coefficient is our slope. That's m. And in this case, it is 2 thirds, or it will have a rise of 2, a run of 3, both going in a positive direction. So rise of two, run of three, and then I connect those points. So my first point is one is zero, one, as you can see right here. So I started at zero, I go horizontally, I don't move at all, I only go vertically one point. My next point, I do a rise, rise of two, run of three, so I'm going to draw that real quick, but this time I'm going to use blue. So see, I already applied the points. So I went up two, and then over one, two, three. And then the next step is to connect those points and put arrows on either end. And there's my line. So you can see I start with my y-intercept, which is zero, one. I use the rise over run to find my second point. I could have done multiple, I could have gone from here and then done another, uh, another rise of two, run of three. I could have started and done a rise of four and a run of six. It's going to, these are all going to get the same points and then I connect that line. If this seems like it's easy, that's good because it should be pretty simple. It's just taking everything that we've learned so far and adding one more step to it. So I'm gonna clear that out. Let's try another one. So if I'm given the slope intercept, y equals 4 thirds x minus 2. Remember that is 4 thirds times x. I'm gonna just put this in parentheses real quick because sometimes it's not four over three X, it's actually four thirds times X minus two. It's hard to, hard to show that using slides, but all year long we've been making do, and I appreciate that you guys have been so um, understanding with trying to work through this. So if Y equals four thirds X minus two, I first look for my Y intercept. My Y intercept is two, but in this case, since it's four thirds X minus two, my y-intercept is actually negative 2. And if I graph that, it is I start, it start at 0, 0, and I just count down 1, 2 units in a negative direction. So my y-intercept is negative 2. My m, what's my m going to be? Correct, is 4 thirds. And is it a positive or negative 4 thirds? Since I have a positive 3, or four over a positive three, that means that my slope, even though my y-intercept 
is negative two, my actual slope is going to be positive. It's gonna be, if I look at it going left to right, it's gonna look like the line is going up. That's honestly, that's the simplest way to look. If you look at your line starting left to right and it looks like it's going up, that means that has a positive slope. If it looks like it's going down, then it has a negative slope. So my rise is four, my run is three. So then I connect those, connect those using a ruler and I put an arrow on both ends. So let's look. So I have negative two as my y-intercept and then I went, I went up one, two, three, four, and then over one, two, three units to get my next point. And the coordinates of my next point is actually three, two. But since I'm starting at negative two, that's why it's not my next point isn't four, three, it's three, or, or three, four, it is three, two, because I went up four units from my y-intercept. That's the best thing about using the y-intercept uh, the slope intercept formula is that it gives you a starting point to find your next point. And remember, in order to draw a line, you need to have at least two points. This is the easiest way. I could put, I could put points anywhere along here, but the easiest way to do it is to start at my y-intercept and use rise over run, and then I connect. And there you have it. This time I had it fly in from the bottom. So my air or my line connects my y-intercept to my second point. And remember, every point along this line, every point along this line is a solution to this equation. I could plug any number in here for x and come out with what my y-coordinate is going to be. If I plug in zero for x with zero, zero times four thirds is zero minus two equals negative two. So if my x coordinate is zero, my y coordinate is going to be negative two. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So let's keep moving on. One more. So for this one, y equals negative three x. This one looks a little bit different, but remember, I'm first looking for my y-intercept. Remember, the coordinates for y-intercept, the x-coordinate is going to be zero. So if I put a zero in here for my x, what's my y going to be? Negative three times x equals, or negative three times zero equals zero. So my answer to this equation is my y-intercept is going to be zero. So this is going to, this is going to go right through the origin. So I'm going to do, so my y-intercept is zero, so it's zero, zero. My m, remember the m is the number that I am multiplying or the coefficient that I'm multiplying by the variable x. It is negative three, so that means that my rise is going to be negative three, my run is one. So I'm gonna go down three units and over one unit. And then I connect. So I started zero, zero. My next coordinate, my x coordinate actually did as two negative six because that also solves this. If I put in a two for x, negative three times two is negative six. And then I connect those lines. So as I, and as I look at my line, starting left to right, it looks like my line is going down, which means it's going in a negative direction. So the last part for today's, I combined today's lesson because these are two things that kind of go hand in hand. Looking at the equation and pulling out the y-intercept and or the, pulling out the y-intercept, pulling out the slope. Um, in this next part, we're going to be doing the opposite. So when you write a linear, equa linear equation, remember, it is 
still y equals mx plus b. So from this, we're going to be looking at a graph and trying to figure out what the equation should be, like what the value of m is, what the value of b is. So when given, given a graph of a line, you can write the equation just by looking at where it intersects the y-axis and then counting the rise over run. So if I look at this graph right here that I've been given, I first go one, two. My y-intercept is negative two. And then if I go try to get from, if I try to get from this point to this point, I color those in a little bit. I have to go, I look, I go up one unit and then over one, two, three units, which means that my slope is one third. So my final equation is one third times x minus two. Remember, I'm starting with my y intercept. I started the, the origin here and I count down one, two. So that means that my y-intercept is negative two. Then my slope is positive one-third. What about these guys? I have two more equations here. First, starting here with what is number three. So I look for my slope, my y-intercept, and the equation. So I start by counting down one, two, three, four. So my y-intercept is negative four, but then when I count it up to get my slope, to get to this next point, I had to go up three units and over one unit, which gives me excuse me, it was negative five, and it's up four units and over one. So my equation is four x minus five, because I started by going down, I said four units, it was actually five units because I, I misspoke. What about for number four here? I'm gonna use, I can, remember I can use any of the points here. My first, I look, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my y-intercept is a positive seven, but in order to go from this point down another, I went down one, two, three, four units, and then over one, two, three, four units. Negative four over four is negative one. So the equation from this, negative one x plus seven, or negative x plus seven. Okay, I wanted to show you these two because for tonight's homework, you're gonna have to look at an equation and pull out this pull out the slope and pull out the y-intercept and then you're also going to have to look at some graphs and do the same thing so i wanted to show you both ways um, and remember any point on this line is going to be a solution to y equals negative x plus seven any point on this line is going to be a solution to y equals four x minus five all right as always if you have any questions please come and find me uh, you all have my number, you have my email address. Um, don't just leave a comment saying, Mr. I don't understand. I really am here to help you because the next thing that we're doing, we're going to be taking this and you're going to be having your final evaluation or your final assessment on all the aspects of slope that we have discussed. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I look forward to hearing from you. Have a math on.